like crawl out from a crack in the floor or something. Don't I'm- drink the silverfish potion at 3 a.m. Or you're like, <laughs> into a silverfish. <laughs> Boys here. The internet's number one poison swamp podcast is back to perfect parry your lord needs. I'm your adopted son, Peter O'Donoghue, and I am joined by. It's me. I'm like a, a pile of black ooze that's actually a dragon and then also slightly sexual. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, my name's James. I lost both my arms in a swamp and nobody gave me a new one. So uh, parrying's pretty tough. <laughs> James is our resident bog body on the on the podcast. So. Yes, yeah, perfectly James. preserved for eight hundred years. Yeah, <laughs> some of you uh, spend all summer getting ready or getting ready for your beach body for the summer. Uh, I just have a bog body, which means I just let my body decay. Yeah, well, I was gonna say decay. bog body it's ready great. would be like, oh yeah, to get bog body ready, I committed a crime in uh, Scotland in the six hundreds, so they just <laughs> <laughs> they just dumped me in there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this is another episode that's been a long time coming. Um, excuse me. I definitely wanted to play Sekiro before covering, but after finally having put in about 15 hours and truly not enjoying the game, at least between boss fights, I was never going to finish it. Ethan has said he's probably not going to finish it. Jamie's maybe had someday. a million chances. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, so maybe, I don't know we'd finally when, do it. Maybe when fatherhood gets easier, you know? But until yeah. then, yeah. yeah. I like raising a daughter is hard. You know what mm-hmm. I would like to do is relax with a difficult game. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd like to play it. Uh, a listener bought it for Ethan, which you also have access to Ethan's account through Family Share. So I'm the mm-hmm. only one who doesn't have like free access to it. I Maybe bought one it. Day. I you bought, bought it. but you refunded it because your controller didn't work. We all heard this story. No, no you bought that it. Was you before. bought it before. I've, I've purchased it a third time. Whoa. Whoa. It, works, it works fine. <laughs> third time yeah. was quite, quite, quite. Quite simply, the charm. Ja- Jamie, the guy out here, likes to complain about Pete retelling a story. He tricks Pete into retelling a story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess I guess I stopped listening the third time he said Sekiro, so I didn't know that he bought it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's when uh, Ethan started playing video games, I couldn't access his account anymore. So I was like, well, the the listeners want me to cover this. I'm gonna need to put the time in. So I finally yeah. I pulled the trigger on it. Speaking of speaking of fatherhood being hard, shout out to Homer. Uh, once patron who uh, bought me the game in the first place and had a, a baby da- baby daughter around the same time as me. Lisa. <laughs> Maggie, I think, is the youngest one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he would, his, his first daughter would be Lisa. That's true. Yeah. Right. Uh, but luckily, despite the fact I don't really enjoy the game, the people who requested it, patrons don't tickle me, Last Peekaboo and Commodore Turtle, as well as the normies Captain Happy Face 545 and Nathan Wide, which is a great pun. I didn't <laughs> notice when I was writing it down, but saying it out loud, top tier, dude. Very yeah, good. I don't get it. Nathan Wise. It's, it's like, wide. imagine Mike, oh, yeah, Nathan Mike Tyson saying uh, an insurance commercial. Yeah, gotcha. Nathan Wise. It's on your thigh. <laughs> um, I also want to shout out uh, Big Bugs and Immortality, diving into Sekiro's folklore on the Good Morning Amori WordPress. Uh, when I do... F- um, from Soft Games, I like to find a not Vadi video on YouTube source because he... Frankly, in my opinion, my conspiracy is the fact that uh, they started basing the game's lore off shit he made up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> just like because uh, he's a really good storyteller. Like Moss Bag with Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight, is the same. Right. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. Mo- mo- whatever Moss Bag says. Like the devs have gone on to say, like, yeah, whatever Moss ba- Bag says. Yeah. That's what the lore is. Like, Bife uh, for Destiny is the same thing. Uh, another YouTuber. Um, yeah. So I mean, we skimmed over it there, but fellas, quickly, have you played the game? Yeah, we've talked about it before. I played until we the sure first have. giant, and Jamie just said that he's never played it. So there you he go. Never got the chance. I have. Uh, I I've uh, watched gameplay, but I did think it was. It. I did think it was fun. I just like the same thing with Elden Ring. Like Elden Ring looks fun too, but I'm also like just super not in the mood to grind and get good. I just don't want to get good. I'm done getting good. I I got good once upon a time, and I'm done. And I'm gonna get, gonna be bad forever. Okay, <laughs> don't be mad. <laughs> yeah. I, the things that i know from that game is like i know it's the first dark souls where you could jump and that was really cool that is correct yeah i know that there's like a lot of um going through like camps where you can either sneak through or you can kill your way through you can like go up on the awnings and get or scatter your way across uh you can i know there's a guy with 
you kill and then he comes back a sec well like everybody comes back a second time but he has his own head after you kill him or something uh, uh we, the, yeah the monkey, right yeah uh we, well, there is the guardian ape which we'll talk about and yeah. we'll also talk about genichiro ashina and his grandfather ishan they're very nice. important to the setup of the world it's what this whole thing is about here right. i've um, seen the snake over the cliff yeah. yeah uh that that part i forget why yeah it was it was it's like the false dragon i think is is what it's actually called it's, it's from japanese mythology right um and i've seen the very opening clip a couple times too because i've watched a few streamers like start the game uh yeah. Wh- where yeah you have your your first battle where you're doomed to lose i guess but I, I know a little bit about the game just through cultural osmosis but never played it through yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly i i still recommend people try it certainly like me personally which i've mentioned on other episodes like i'm fucking tired of um from soft's greatest hits i put down sekiro when i was uh, in a poison swamp that poisoned me and slowed me down and i was just attacked from all angles by sword wielding monkeys and i was like i'm not doing this again guys like, <laughs> i got i got the loot i got to the boss i died to it once and then i had to go back and i was like i i, I just not a fifth time i'm not i'm not yeah. fucking doing it like i, not again. I find it surprising though like uh, when it comes to like uh pinocchio you were happy to play it two times in a row right away and they but had that, a poison swamp. Yeah, and it no, was repetitive. No, I thought that I'd well, take a shot in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> playing the exact same game uh, twice in a row, I guess, is less variety than a whole new uh, FromSoft game. I'm surprised you didn't uh, enjoy it. It's just because I hate playing it is is really the problem. The boss fights are great, and just the levels, the the it has a clear plot with like voiced characters and all this shit. And this review exists, I think, on the bonus, so I'm not going to get too into it. It's just the abstract. Dark Souls storytelling that for some reason they are completely committed to is just like remember okay, well, everyone who's new who's joining is coming because they like the lore. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, maybe I we do. shouldn't just spend the first opening shitting on the game. And I, I know, I know. It's like, it I do, through, I do yeah. like it, and it really disappoints me that it's just not clicking with me because everything right. I've, a lot of what I've seen is cool, and I had a ton of fun putting this together. It's just not for me, so don't yeah. at me for not beating the game if I get something wrong about the post credits or whatever. I Google as much as I could. <laughs> I, I thought it was I thought it was a lot of fun. I I yeah. I really did. If I was twenty four uh, again, I would uh, I would commit the time because I think I would like it a lot more than like Souls because uh, it's faster and I I typically really like that in games like the really quick story running around. <laughs> yeah, right. whatever. I the story I take take it or leave it for me with. Oh. Uh, like that's that's not why I go to a Souls game. That's right. not why I'm going to a FromSoft game. Like, I want a I want a good story. You know, I'm playing a CRPG turn based. If I'm if I want like good story based, so, yeah. or I, any I should say an engaging story for myself. I think, but yeah, still I get to recommend. I think people should try it out. I think the combat's good enough that I, probably anybody could learn it. In my opinion, at least Hassan anyway. Biker did it. You can too. Yeah, that guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know. I've never watched. Oh, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's his specialties in in politics, not in gaming. And everyone would make fun of him for not getting good. And he eventually got good. He's a very famous uh, figure online on like Twitter and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. YouTube and all. I've never heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, who, what, where, when, and why? So the general setting uh, of the game is the Sengoku period in Japan's history. This is a historical period that lasted from 1467 to 1615. Uh, my lore boys canon is that the game takes place some point before 1589, since the primary family clan um, of, uh, excuse me, the the primary family can- clan that you go up against are the Ashina clan, at least for the first 15 hours of the game, which is how I got it could change at some point. Um, Genichiro Ashina is, is also my favorite boss fight that I got through there. Uh, he's the one before the Guardian Ape and has three phases. Uh, I'll show you a picture later, and it'll be available for patrons. Fucking phenomenal. Great rhythm. Getting the parries down feels so goddamn good when you learn them. It's, 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 it's closer to Guitar Hero than it is to Dark Souls, because it's just like, boom, 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 boom. Like, once you get the rhythm, you... I was getting through the first phase, zero damage. But then the third phase would always whip it's, my ass because that's a yeah. long fight but yeah <laughs> it's funny you say it's funny you make that comparison because i there's a mario streamer i watch who used to be like uh like very competitive in, in guitar hero uh, and i watched him play dark souls the first time and he's he made that exact comparison he's like it's more like uh like with the parry timings and everything he's like it's more like guitar hero than it is like a an action honestly or like a is that ryukar ryukar no or- uh, 
Thab, Thab East, 721. It's the same guy who's who's oh, beating beast. every N64 game. Right. I have him on Twitch because of because you mentioned that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, I'd wager, and this information might be out out there, that the game takes place in the 1540s, um, since the founder of Ashina, Ishin, is still alive during the game. Uh, he's visibly old as fuck. Uh, however, thanks to the divine waters that we're going to talk about, he could actually be centuries old. But it's like he doesn't like it. when you meet him for the first time, he's like, ah, on my 101st birthday, you would be here or some shit to give us like real good information as to what is going on. Um, now, while the Ashina clan is real, and if you guys want to open up the first image I got there, you should see the family crest. It's like three parallel lines in a circle. Um, yep. Ishin is not a real historical figure nor the founder of the real Ashina clan. Uh, that is a guy named Miura Yoshikai. Uh, and the clan ended up dissolving after losing a battle against Date Masamune in 1589. Which Masamune is, why is a big name. It is, yeah. Well, like, the, this era of Japan had also, like, the great unifier, Oda Nobunaga. Like, this is, this is, this is big Japanese time. This is uh, it's their this favorite big, period to set games. Big Japanese in. Time. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is their favorite time time period to put a game in, right? Is this like when I, period. I'm bad with like history? I know like England and Spain and all them like they colonized North America, but at a certain point, like Japan was going out and colonizing everywhere. Is yeah, this, yeah, they it, colonized Korea and Manchuria, which is part of China or Russia, I think, or something like that. The, the Koreans and the Japanese currently still have bad blood, as far as I know. That's one of those like country yeah. rivalries. Like, I only, uh, like the Nordic countries aren't all fond of each other. I've heard from my Swedish friend who well, there, doesn't like the Finns. I know for <laughs> Koreans, there's like Koreans that are alive today that have seen like Vill their whole village is like butchered by Japanese and stuff like it's not that far in the history for Japanese and Korea I've, but 500 years ago I, I have no idea what's going on in the, in the yeah, world history it, it's yeah. still a lot of empire yeah. crafting was, but Japan yeah. has got a bunch of I think they were called like shogunates it's a bunch of like large family clans constantly fighting for control over each other Oda Nobunaga was the guy who I at least through fights and politics was the first great unifier of Japan because he won enough yeah. victories to put together a sizable chunk of the island right cool the the wikipedia page japanese invasions of korea starts in 1592 so it was definitely happening around this time oh boy okay so they took care of the ashina and they were just like okay korea's next on the ticket baby like, well, let's yeah <laughs> two yeah, and a half years like, later it's like 1592 <laughs> to 1598 so this is like a very specific series of invasions of korea i'm gonna guess it, it had been happening much earlier and also yeah. probably continued much past this one particular instance this is a uh, a cap like you know the first letters are capitalized for Japanese invasion of Korea. Oh, okay, mm. right, yeah. Okay. So all that stuff about the Ashina clan is not game canon, but it is cool that the Ashina were a real clan in the Sengoku period. Um, Sekiro's version of Japan is predictably more fantastical, so I didn't really expect them to adhere to real Japanese history. Frankly, when I started researching this, I thought they made up every fucking word of it, and I found it really cool that they pulled from a real period and like a real family clan and a bunch of other kind of real stuff, which I thought was a very nice touch, especially since so much of Dark Souls, well, like their previous games, at least, is completely fake. Like the only accurate yeah. thing in Bloodborne is like the British people in knife crime, right? Like that's, yeah. they, they <laughs> stab each other with pointed sticks when they get drunk in the streets. I just, I just have to wonder, like, culturally, is Ashina, would that just be like, a, oh, that's like the Wagner family? You know, like, is it like, is that just like, it must just be like a normal name for them, right? It sounds, it sounds so fantastic to us that like this very real group of people, uh -huh. like the, the Ashina clan, but yeah, right. It's like, oh, yeah. remember when, when the Smiths yeah. banded together yeah. and went, exactly. went across, yeah. 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 John Smith. yeah, like the King's last name is like Windsor, which is like, oh yes, the Windsor yeah. family, right? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. I'm a real royalist. I said King. I was right. Um, wow. so. Above this version of Japan is the Divine Realm, uh, a landscape of clouds, lightning storms, and mountaintops uh, coiled around or maybe even growing out of a massive immortal Sakura cherry tree is uh, called the Ever Blossom. is the Divine Dragon. So you guys can pull that one up now as well if you want. It should be the second one. It is such a cool-looking fucking dragon. Yeah, it's very cool. It's like a... T got the body of a tapeworm. Uh... 
he's got like little tendrils, got tiny, tiny little hands. Oh boy, cute little hands. Uh, but white coming out of this giant cherry blossom tree with like a big, like what? What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven dildos on a stick. It's, yeah, it, it looks like he's wielding a uh, like a plastic cactus. You would That's what I was going to say. <laughs> it has like the cactus pattern of where it like has the little arms that stick out. Yeah. 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 And it, it, do you notice he only has one arm like our future hero Sekiro man will? He has three. But yeah, well, I was going to say he's, 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 he has two, but I didn't see the big arm holding the cactus. I just saw the two tiny little four paws there. Yeah, Where's the, he's, got oh. little t- he's got little T-Rex arms where his regular mm-hmm. looking shoulders would be. But then the rest of the dragon body goes down to what looks like a man's torso growing out of its neck. It, right? Yeah, his little hands like this looks like he's like a servant who's ready to take your order. If you yes. just cover the bottom half of him. But then where he, he where he's meant for business, he only has one arm. It looks like he's, yeah. he's, he's got some Falcor vibes, I think, from the never ending story. Yep. Right. White he's dragon. an Asian dragon, yeah. very serpentine, white. He's got the whiskers. Very almost cool. I, very I, like I, I love can, this. A very like canine face, though, almost, I think. Yeah, well, uh, like a lot of Asian dragons kind of have like a lion or like a felid face, right? Mm-hmm. As well. What's a felid? Like, like cat-like? Yeah. Felid, felid Navidad. Felid, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, got like a, he's got like a Spanish Christmas look to him, if you know what. It, you, <laughs> we all know what that looks like. You know, <laughs> you, you, your drunk Spanish uncle shows up holding the cactus. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and there, and he says, Feliz Navidad. <laughs> so uh, the Divine Realm here, here takes uh, direct inspiration from the Japanese version of Heaven called, and I'm going to fuck this up, Taka Magahara, or Ame, thankfully, in the Shinto religion. Uh, the Shinto Book of Myths, uh, Legends, and Lore, the Kojiki, states that Ame is the birthplace of all the gods, uh, and the cloudy landscape comes from a depiction of the Japanese god of islands, Kinayumi, poking his spear through the clouds into the ocean to create the Japanese archipelago. Cool. cool. So that's where Very the landmass cool. came from. So From a spear. Yeah. I don't understand how picture. exactly. There's, there's a picture which I... I didn't pull up uh, that I just saw on the Wikipedia page where it's just like him standing on a cloud, very casually poking the ocean, creating islands. And then there's just like a goddess standing next to him, just watching him work oh. the whole time. No, she's <laughs> doing better than that. She's just showing him her, her tits. Is she? <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's ogling her while he's doing this. Pardon <laughs> me. I'll post the picture for you. Okay. Yeah. We, and which, for the patrons. We'll which angle is it from? Facebook. Yeah. Oh, this is not the one I saw. This rocks. <laughs> this just, Oh, that is this, that is a classic 14th century Owuga look on his eye on his face yeah. right now. That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, dude, got, he's those boobs have gotten so excited his hair's starting to curl on top. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got the double uh, pony nod. I guess the samurai used to be the double samurai back then. Yeah, yeah, it he's was got, a sign of their power. You would he's claim got terrible other samurai teeth. Nuts. He hasn't. He has a glorious neck beard. He has a very weak chin. And he's just staring at this this lady. He's got a penile nose. He yeah. looks like a troll or something almost. Yeah, he looks little, like a Japanese devil. Like ogreish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Is, he, <laughs> is he knee deep in water? Clouds. Or possibly uh, the ocean, yeah. Okay. But yeah, he, he lived among the clouds with the other gods and goddesses. Cool. Um Sekiro's divine realm is the source of the rejuvenating waters, uh, waters that when consumed heal the body and can even grant immortality. Uh, the game's healing potion is rejuvenating waters that automatically fill up within your, you have a drinking gourd, it's- which was like an old piece of, you know, an old vessel people would use. They dry out a gourd and then drink out of it from there to it's, carry around it's water. Ame no Azume's uh branded gamer girl bathwater is what you're talking about <laughs> exactly yeah uh, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah where she she threw the clouds poked her feet into the water around japan and, <laughs> oh. and har- harvested oh. that <laughs> I got <a> <laughs> like one little I got toe drawn yeah. jesus yeah. fish in the water <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> that's a callback to our our patreon bonus episode patreon.com yeah. slash boys go get it um if you want the real potent shit though you may want to consume the divine sediment. Uh, this is the uh, minerals mixed with giant magic koi fish shit down at the bottom of the Fountainhead Palace's reservoir. Uh, it's very much like the uh, fentanyl uh, to or trank to the healing gourds, like prescription painkiller, basically. Mm-hmm. That's the good shit. Um, so you can open you up. Start the- with the. You start with the prescription good water, and then eventually, whenever the government takes that away from you, then you go to the what is it, the scat at the bottom of the sea? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, when the your insurance stops covering your gourd water, 
Then you need to go talk to a giant fish. And he'll hook you up with the dirt from the bottom of the lake. And <laughs> <laughs> you know those fish that pick up pebbles off the ground and spit them? Yeah. It's like, it just like spits it in your face. It's yeah. just like a bag of heroin. <laughs> yeah. Pick that up off the bottom of the ocean amidst all that koi shit and spit it in my mouth is a very junky way of going about it, right? So, yeah, it's, yeah, it is like it is taking butts out of the cracks of the sidewalk, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can open the picture of uh, Genichiro Ashina now as well, which should be the next picture. Guy with a red sash and a blackened arm. Mm-hmm. On the subject of like the uh, the complete d- dissolution of some of our cities, some of his flesh is turning black, due possibly due to the consumption of divine sediment. Uh, Genichiro, despite his three stage fight, does not die. He does come back to life at the end of that fight and is one of the optional final bosses that you can go up against. In reality, though, I don't know if it's actual like decay from the sediment on his arm. <laughs> There's I... just diabetes and gangrene. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> gangrene's not actually far off, actually. Just beating up a leper, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> yeah, they're invincible, right? I saw an awful 4 <laughs> post today. If someone's like, I've got gamer leg, and their leg was like literally rotting off because of, <laughs> of like gangrene and shit. It's like, where are you seeing 4chan posts these days? Uh, through Reddit. Where he likes hanging out with his friends. I don't, no, I don't hang out on 4chan. Jay, get, Jamie's got, Jamie likes to make big plans on 4chan, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, Flynn, <laughs> wait a second. Keep an eye out, Governor. Hey, You'll be seeing hey, him real soon. <laughs> these comic books coming soon, but maybe Jamie's manifesto will get here sooner. <laughs> <laughs> like the entire, the first 400 pages are just a manifesto. With comic yeah. starts in there. <laughs> yeah, it, it says Anon 77642 is like the person <laughs> who wrote it. Yeah. No, um, there, there's some weird shit out. There's like a guy who made mustard gas and like poisoned himself in his own bathroom. There's like a lot of crazy shit that goes on in there. Yeah, there's weird shit on 4chan. It's been weird since I found out about it in 2005. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do that stuff, but they also do fun stuff like take a bunch of uh, dinosaur pictures that people have drawn in textbooks and any of them with their mouth open, they put a microphone in front of it and Photoshop so it looks like the, the, the dinosaurs are singing. So we get that too. That's, yeah. yeah. It's a, Jamie's re- manifesto is just a bunch of de- dollar store dinosaur stickers with microphones <laughs> sent to the mayor. <laughs> She's like, I don't know how to react to this. Am I in danger? <laughs> Give Stegosaurus a microphone by the end of today or you'll regret it. Yeah. <laughs> Am I in danger? Jamie on a Stegosaurus just comes stampeding through City Hall. It's like, <laughs> I tried to warn you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a killdozer, but it's just got like a Stegosaurus. Like it's painted to look like a Stegosaurus. Like, like, killdozer is legendary. That guy who stole the plane and just flew it around. Sky King. Legendary. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know Sky King. I know Killdozer. Very familiar. Very legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Killdozer legendary. Sky Fuck King is a tickets. sad story, which people should look up at some point. Uh it is in two it is both inspiring and sad at the same time i would say but because the guy went up there with the plan of not making it down but there's like footage of him up there like flying over mountain he's like this is fucking beautiful man this is awesome and i think he did like a barrel roll in a yeah, plane he did several loop-de-loops and a lot of pilots were just like i would never be able to do that and like the dc9 that he fucking stole from yeah. Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway my theory and again this may come later than 15 hours into the game I think Genichiro's arm is burned and somewhat gangrenous uh, due to the lightning strikes that he can capture with his blade. Uh, This method is called the Way of Tomoe, which was taught to him by the great warrior Tomoe uh, before she died. Did you notice the snake that you showed or the dragon that you showed us that's holding the cactus blade has a lightning strike hitting the blade as well? He can also capture lightning and throw it at you. You have to parry it and throw it back. I watched the fight because the music in the divine dragon fight is divine as it were <laughs> of course um anyway uh yeah, sorry the one thing i wanted to, the, the uh, some of the legendary warriors that fought in a battle are like uh, the owl madam butterfly <laughs> ishinashina and then uh tomoe as well these are like some of the ancient clan of warriors who like helped defeat some other clan uh for ashina Ashina is also the local government who now have a conflict with the uh, Interior Ministry, which is loosely based off of the Right Ministry from Oda Nobunaga. That's just something I read and left out, but there you go. Little little nuggy there off the top. Off the sure. Um, the Divine Waters seem to have stagnated over time since they've just been 
straight up just collecting in a reservoir, just fucking sitting there, bird <laughs> shit in them and whatnot. Clean, you gotta <laughs> clean your divine water tanks every so often. Yeah, yeah you've got exactly. that, like, like it's, it's it, like almost identical to a pool skimmer, but it's made of just like <laughs> 16th century Japanese wood, just like yeah. trying to get <laughs> dead like birds out of it. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was thinking of like baptisms and stuff. Do you have to like shake or stir the water before you dunk the baby in to make sure the holy is equally spread apart? Or is it like sediment? Oh, like it's separated? It the bottom? <laughs> yeah, I don't think <laughs> they leave it. I don't think they leave it full all week, you know. There is a I have the church I went to uh, in in our small town where I got my little littlest brother baptized. They had one at the door where anyone could just give himself a flick, and then they had oh, one people for just the baby in their hands. They got you got to change that water. People just walking in, sticking their that's a pre that's a pre COVID world. Right? It's a pre COVID world water for people. I'm to pretty sure their hands in and flick they, on their face. They, they dump out and like. Add more holy water at the end of the day. Yeah, I would not. assume. I have free it, it's free. Yeah. You're a priest. You just yeah. make more. <laughs> yeah. Dummy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, what, oh, okay, no, that was uh, from the pre-show too. I'm not going to tell that story again. But <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't give it all away for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I've never given myself a flick of the the holy water. I think I've given my my sandwiches more pickle juice or olive juice flicks than I've given myself. <laughs> it's like a blessing. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It. I mean, the do you say a sacred rite while you do it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> my sandwiches have a cross. My sandwich. yeah. yeah, my sandwiches have a cross section. <laughs> you normally pickly. You normally pickly. <laughs> <laughs> what if the Sekiro guy's just chugging pickle juice? Oh, dude, yeah, he's just like chasing shooters with it. <laughs> hey, I mean, it, it'll ward off gamer leg. Oh yeah, you don't oh, want yeah, to get gamer absolutely. leg, man. It's just electrolytes. Yeah. That's that's what you need to to stave off the gamer leg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, when you, I don't know if you're confused with the size of this reservoir, the it's like a it's like a natural reservoir that's being filled yeah. with, like yeah. that you would dam up to create like a hydroelectric dam. It's massive. Oh, you yeah. need a big spoon to stir up that holy mess. I mean, he's got a giant cactus stick. Like, just stir it up, dude. Yeah, sure. Yeah, True. what's what's he so busy with? It's like when you haven't shaken up the ketchup. It's like the ketchup pre cum that comes out and fucks up everything <laughs> you're putting it on. <laughs> Ugh, I hate that. So um, now we shake the ketchup. I want a full load. <laughs> Don't yeah. t- I'm not. I'm Make not sure- gonna add you ketchup bottle. Yeah. Make sure to shake <laughs> your babies booting. before you baptize them. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, they seem to have stagnated over time. Uh, those who partake in the current divine waters or consuming the current divine water or at least over the over an extended period of time seem to rot away and sometimes mutate this is a neat reuse of the curse of the undead from dark souls uh undeath you do come back to life you guys can open up a picture of just a a senpo monk who's he looks all stroked out his skin's all gray and gross and his face is saggy he's been consuming divine waters uh some people turn into what are called mist nobles which I don't have a picture of, but their face is completely peeled back and they just have like chattering Halloween skeleton teeth <laughs> and like a wormy body and they just kind of crawl around. If you want to look up a mist noble. Jean Chrétien drank the water, man. <laughs> <laughs> we elected him. <laughs> He's look, the, like, this mist noble looks like a pet that you would have, Peter. Yeah, they're, they're cute in an ugly way. It looks, <laughs> it, it looks like it's got like a chihuahua face. Is that the thing with the centipede on it? Am I too far ahead? I just uh, no, posted, it, I posted a picture. Pete hadn't provided us with. Oh, it. okay. If you go to the bottom, oh. long fingers, very like moist, uh, pink skin, just holes where eyes should be. Do you know they have... getting flat and big? And yeah, the lips, the upper lip is completely rotted away. They have an extra knuckle on the fingers too, which is kind oh. of very uncanny. Yeah, it's for edging it... ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three so really... spots, baby. Yeah, I'm it's jealous it's of how long prostate. my darling <laughs> I'm, Hines. I'm jealous of how long that pinky is. I got a little short one. You know, you know, if you could straight reach, to the bottom of the cocaine bag. <laughs> if, if you could reach, uh, if when you're fingering a ketchup bottle, if you can reach 57, all the ketchup will come out right away. Very easily. <laughs> God. Yep. Uh, uh, in some cases, whatever has consumed the divine waters becomes infested. Uh, and this is when a massive centipede takes host within the body, which Jamie opened up there because I didn't provide the right picture or uh, the same <laughs> picture. Rather, um, this is different than being descended directly from the divine dragon itself, at least what I think 
uh, the, the lineages. The uh, Kuro, the divine heir, our Prince Peach for the episode, is immortal and he is visibly not rotting away. Uh, the plot revolves around rescuing him from the Ashina clan and then severing his immortality so people will stop going to war over him. That's kind of what he wants to do. Um, in game, he's also called the Dragon Prince or said to have dragon's blood. Uh, but more on all of that and immortality after the break. Welcome back from the break, everybody. Thanks for listening. Um, so the Ashina likely captured Kuro to use in their uh, ongoing war with the Interior Ministry, like I'd mentioned. Um, there's no like great unification that Obunaga would have uh, that uh, Nobunaga would have done uh, in Sekiro. He's not mentioned. His equivalent is not mentioned at all. Like the 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 primary mover and shaker right now is is uh, Ishin Ashina. The, the one that's okay. left over. And you do get to fight people from the Interior Ministry. They have, they're just one of the enemy types. They seem to be uncorrupted. They'll seem to be human, excuse me. Um, so they don't seem to be partaking in the Divine Waters, which is good for their health, uh, which is likely why that they're trying to get Kura. Everybody wants the Immortal Dragon Prince, dude. Of course. Right. Why it's like you? a really good like political thing to have. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want Peach Boy? Yeah. <laughs> um so i read that his name is a reference to the chinese nine sons of the dragon king where he is the dispenser of rain uh this does make really good sense as a dragon prince uh where divine water falls from heaven and collects in a reservoir um i tried to follow up on that like through with the wiki like through the fan wiki and through the wikipedia link and from that wordpress that i had been looking up afterwards the only chinese chinese rain dragon i could find was called yin long so that's like Chinese boy canon, I guess, that that is his inspiration, because I believe Kuro roughly translates to Ninth Sun in Japanese. But it's completely different from all the nine names, even modernized nine names of the Chinese dragons. So I don't yeah. know. I don't. It's, it's scary. Whenever you think of like North American history and the types of people who give themselves titles like dragon or fury or things like that, uh, they, they, bad things happen over here. So I hope better things are happening over there. Who's the dragon? Oh, yeah, never yeah. mind. <laughs> dragon D's nuts. The Grand Dragon. Have you heard yeah, of him? That, that's what no. popped into my head at first. I was just like, who the fuck calls himself the dragon? That's so stupid. It is still yeah. stupid. It's still yeah. stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's still, still very still stupid. stupid. I was right. Um, so get one of the game's endings. You are sent to the Divine Realm to get a tear from the dragon's eyes. Um, the item description reads on the tear item itself. Tears received from the Divine Dragon. The gracious gift of tears can only be granted by the mortal blade. The body of the divine dragon is eternal, and its tears, once shed, will maintain their form and moisture in perpetuity. Should one of the dragon's heritage partake in the dragon's tears, immortal severance will be reified. So I did not get far enough into the game to encounter the word reified, so I googled it. Um, it is to make something abstract more concrete or real. Big snakes don't cry. You ever seen a snake cry? No, they have the cap over their eyes. Yeah, they don't we're even all, blink. We're also like, are we just going to gloss over the fact that this key, this has the potential to keep something permanently moist? Oh, like, oh yeah, is, yeah. This is, yeah. This now is you the, don't need all, those long mist noble fingers to get your ketchup. Uh, all, the, oh, <laughs> all, the, all the circumcised Americans out there listening to the podcast just like salivating at this man. Like, come on, <laughs> one dragon steer, in, please. In, infinite <laughs> jerkins, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking of the Vaporeon copy pasta with Power World blowing up and Pokemon blowing up right now. <laughs> God damn. God damn, dude. Uh, the Immortal Blade I'll get into later is also very important. Um, one thing that I noticed in the line uh, when uh, on the tier is that the body of the D Divine Dragon is eternal. This doesn't seem to be correct with the way it looks. The big, wide, epic screenshot I gave you guys is just because I wanted you to see the entire landscape. But it's missing a fucking arm. Wait. Right? So, it, <laughs> like, you know, in Jesus, like, when you go to church and they're like, you get to eat the body of Jesus and they give you a cracker. When they do it for the snake, do they give you a spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, so. it's it's like a Halloween witch thing. Yeah, where yeah. The, the, the priest is like, oh, he puts the little blindfold over your eyes. Like, oh, this is the yeah. great, this is the divine dragon's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't slurp your deity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody goes, everybody goes to church in uh, in Sekiro with a fork. Yeah, a fork and a spoon because you got to twirl. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You can twirl at the bottom of the bowl, just at the bottom of the chalice. 
You're gonna you're gonna tw- twirl in the commuter bowl, take up everyone's time like that, dude. That's just rude. Come on, it's gonna scratch you over time. On, after get it on everyone. your spoon, twirl it up yourself, take it home. That's right. Twirl it in the walk back to your pew. Would probably be the way to do it, right? Just, <laughs> just Sekiro just twirling spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone brings their own sauce like out of pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it, Isha and Ashida, they're going to war over who does and does not cut their spaghetti. Which I personally oh, no. think people who cut their spaghetti are barbarians. It it deserves it. It's a it's a justified war, right? It's a just it, it, war. It, it is. <laughs> uh, you know. The, the, another thing with spaghetti is the sauce on um, before or after serving is another argument. Uh, so some people like to mix it with the sauce like in the pan and let it cook and the sauce get into the noodle a bit. Some like to put the noodle down and then ladle the sauce onto it. I mix uh, tortellini or ravioli, but spaghetti, spaghetti noodle and most other pasta noodles, it's pasta, sauce, cheese for me. Yeah, it would depend on the sauce for me. Like if it was a... So not mixed, yeah. Yeah, if if it was a and we're gonna piss off the Italians now, but <laughs> uh, if it was like a if I was doing like a rose sauce with spaghetti, I would mix it because I would want it thoroughly mixed. But if it's a bolognese, any of the, then I, I guess would, any of the creamy would sauces you would mix in, right? Yeah, really? exactly. Okay, yeah, I I think you could do both ways. I've tried it both ways. Sometimes I feel like, hey, I want to let it mix and I want to let everyone get to know each other in the pot. Or sometimes the what's the word? Is it homogeneity of like the two different mix? It like where it doesn't it's quite different would be hetero. Yeah. Right? Is it heterogeneity of of like the two different know. feels? Like some <laughs> sometimes you have a little bit more sauce on on, on one bite than another bite. I think that only kind of... kisses boys is homogeneity. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's the chef. The chef's a gay icon. Chef Boyardee, of course. <laughs> chef Boyardee is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's actually a, that's actually a drag queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Every, everything's a drag queen we already drag, established drag that the gays king, have figured right? out all the puns if there's a yeah. pun the gays will find <laughs> they've it, taken yeah. it yeah there's um, no new stories there's only seven drag queen names that have been told throughout the centuries right <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely <Yeah. laughs> anyways if you're making your pasta one way try it the other way there you, do it. you can mix it up you'll have you'll have well, to go to war with the japanese if you do yeah. um but but to to on your point of like immortality or like it being eternal like it's lost an arm there's a, so there's two things I'm thinking here. There is like the age old debate of like immortality versus invincibility. Are they, are they an the arm same? and a leg? Can it be destroyed? Uh, well, he ain't got no legs in the first place. Can never pay that debt. Um, <laughs> That's why I got to get rid of the arm. He doesn't gamble, so he's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, or it could just be like you could destroy it, but it's eternal. It'll always come back, right? Like it'll always just like recoalesce or be reborn or whatever. Like it could yeah. still be eternal in that sense, right? It could also be getting sick. Um the Miyazaki directed uh, Souls games, uh every single one of them is just like, "Oh, you pursued immortality and destroyed the world around you." Secures the fucking same story again, right? Like the Curse yeah. of the Undead and rekindling the fire for the, the Souls games, uh drinking alien blood and bloodborne, right? Yeah. The, is he okay? the shattering of the ring. Uh, is he okay making all these games? Is he okay? Uh, is he worried? Is it all climate I, change? I think he's really worried about like uh, he would hate that guy who drinks his son's blood to live forever, right? Yeah, for sure. That for rich sure. dude. Hmm? Yeah. So cutting your you spaghetti. Mean all of them. Tom Hanks. <laughs> 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 That's why Chet Hanks is a little loopy and yeah, not a blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um. Yeah. So th- that's my kind of fan theory is the fact that like all immortality leads to decay and the divine dragon is not actually eternal, maybe because like nothing is ever happy in Miyazaki directed no. games, so, but uh, also it growing back and maybe like losing a part of itself is a excellent theory. You own axolotls. Well. How did you not think of that? What? Did yeah. they grow their arms and legs back? Yeah. You yeah. Can cut off, go cut off one of your axolotls on your hands uh, right now. Right until now. It, until it, it grows good. back, fight it every time it has all its limbs. <laughs> I think it goes forever. I don't know if they've got like a life system like Mario. That's it. They're well, eternal too. Well, that means that every few days they're going to have to fight you until they beat you. But then when they beat you the first time, then you come back alive a second time. <laughs> You're holding your head. <laughs> we'll set it up for you, Pete. Put it in All your right. will. All right. Thank you. I will. You we'll set up your will so that, that you, you, with like an a RC exoskeleton, will pop out of the casket holding your own severed head and try and fight your axolotls at the service. <laughs> <laughs> Can it light up like a jack-o'-lantern too? Oh, sure, yeah. buddy. Thank you. We'll put some RGBs. Well. Just, <laughs> Jack-o'-lantern skull. Cybernetic yeah. libs. J- Jamie will give you a little uh, microphone sticker that I'll stick on your face, too. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking, you should feed your axolotl spaghetti. They're Why not? Carnivores. They'd slurp them. They would oh. be very cute. 
They like yeah. eating worms. It's kind of like spaghetti. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Kuro being the last of his spaghetti ancient of plan, the sea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> worms, the spaghetti of the earth. Yeah, but the things that eat it's in the sea and the earth, I guess, in the sky. Not every worms, right? The spaghetti there of are. earth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kuro, being the last of an ancient clan, was adopted by Minister Harada of the Ashina clan. You do go to the Harada estate. You kind of have a vision of the past in Sekiro, or fairly early on, or at least I did it fairly early on. Yeah, I, I think I did that one. It's where it's like, it's it's all burning, right? And you're, yeah, yeah, you're exactly. That's when Kuro was kidnapped. Basically. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kuro's yeah. being you, the player character? No, the Peach Boy. Sekiro is you. Oh, Okay, yeah, that is your name. The Divine Prince is um, uh, Sekiro, I believe, is Japanese for wolf because in the English subtitles, it's everybody calls you. They call wolf. you wolf. Yeah, mm, exactly. Sekiro. Yeah. Um, right. So he was uh, adopted by Minister Harada and given a personal shinobi guardian. You, the player, Sekiro or Wolf. Uh, Sekiro himself was an orphan on a battlefield when he was adopted by the legendary shinobi named the Owl. Uh, he's the super big guy with the huge braid that you see in the opening cutscene. Um, the game takes place about 20 years after he was adopted, which would make Sekiro fairly close to our age, maybe mid to late 20s, uh, judging by what the CG model of him looks like. I have a picture of young Sekiro holding the blade of a giant katana. Uh, for you guys and for the patrons. Cool. Yeah. He looks, you know, between five and ten. We, we this, he's our age, and he's doing all that running and jumping. He, he I mean, that? he has a he has a prosthetic arm, so that's like a few joints not aching, right? Yes. So he's tiring. A, he's a cyborg. Uh, I don't see your your you you forgot a picture. There's no picture of him with a giant katana. Well, there's a guy on his knee accepting a sword. Is that yeah, the one? Yep. Yeah, exactly. His right okay. hand is extended. It's, it's in front of him. Okay. Anyway, it's yeah. the, the little boy is is young Sekiro. Yeah, that's like the opening cutscene, right? Or like the title yes. cutscene. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was like the first trailer. It's CGI. It's not even in game. Mm -hmm. um, so Kuro gifts Sekiro some of his some of his power allowing him to die twice before needing to respawn and lose some of his currency forever um one thing i know you had mentioned a long time ago ethan i don't know if it was like off air or whatever so people may have heard this uh when you die in Sekiro, everything you lose is gone forever there is there are no corpse runs you lose money and experience yeah. <laughs> it's fucking gone <laughs> which yeah. is kind of hardcore it's a little crazy Kind of so hardcore, but then I also think I like it more. Like, I'm I, if we've talked about this on air, I probably said it, but it's like that's the part I didn't like the stress of like trying to do the corpse run and making sure I don't yeah. die and not get like gang banged by people. But it's like when it's all gone, I'm like, cool, I'm just playing the game now. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's fine by me. Like, you know, yeah, do you have to like in Bloodborne, you have to farm your um, your drinks. Like, if you want to have enough uh, health potions or whatever to get through a boss, like, you can run out. But in Dark Souls, you always, when you die, it fills back up. In Sekiro, your, your gourd water uh, refills when you rest in a Buddha statue. Okay, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. So there's like literally no running. You just are for back for stuff. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to lose XP until I commit. I'm level 18. I'm going to lose it to the bottom of level 18. I should spend all my money because I'm going to grind a new boss. And then you just live life that way, right? Yeah, exactly. that is, that's what I was doing. It's just like, yeah. just fight regular enemies. If you're close to leveling up, you don't lose skill points. So if you're close to leveling up, just grind, get the point, and you got nothing to fucking lose. Right. Yeah. But Spend I didn't money. learn this. Um, like, I don't remember this part of the tutorial. I remember just noticing, <laughs> like, I can't afford anything, which is odd. And it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you lose all the fucking money when you, do, when you die. Rip. Um, dying and respawning. This is, again, another kind of curse of immortality. Dying and respawning uh, seems to be kind of spiritually radioactive in a way. Major characters start to become afflicted <laughs> with dragon rot um, if you are bad at parrying and get killed all the time. <clears throat> um, this is this can actually be cured. You can cure all the characters at the same time uh, with uh, what I imagine is a limited resource called uh, a dragon's blood droplet. It's a consumable. I was using a dragon's blood droplet every time a third character got dragon rot because that was too many people to not be able to progress through their quests back when I was under the assumption I was going to finish the game before doing this episode, right? Yeah. 
Um, apparently, uh, excuse me, the description states that um, the more that someone with the dragon heritage dies, the more people will begin to suffer from dragon rot. So this oh. is a curse that would a- apply to Kuro as well. So it's maybe taking life force from the people around the Divine Heir and Sekiro, which is a lore boy's canon, right? It, yep. It's it's draining from someone, and a a a drop of Divine Dragon blood can cure people around you. You don't need to take it to them; you just consume it, and it just disperses throughout the universe and and like like karma, Everyone's- basically. And everybody's fine, I, of course, because I got killed a few more times. Um, the sculptor, the guy who upgrades your uh, prosthetic arm. I think I gave him Dragon Rod three times, <laughs> which is just like Pete. Just wear a fucking mask when you come over. Yeah, exactly. okay? <laughs> like every ten days, I'm just refreshing it. The problem is, you're always coming in when one of your arms is it needs a repair, right? So hard yeah, to get exactly. that mask on with just the one left hand. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm holding the sword, just yep. like the stump, trying to hook it around. <laughs> <laughs> snap it like whap into the side of the cheek there yeah. <laughs> yeah. um it also i find this I, I don't know this reason for the dragon rot spreading that i made up um it kind of has like an aesop fable-esque uh twist to it where it's just like oh the greedy animal of the story resurrects and and everybody it's like crops die whereas the little red hen who you know doesn't get herself killed by ninjas and does not need <laughs> does not need to resurrect. She she like has like a bountiful a bountiful harvest and makes her bread and whatnot, right? Yeah. 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 The lore boys fable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um so without a divine heir of their own, the immortality obsessed Buddhist monks of the Senpu Temple, which was the stroked out guy I showed you later, uh sought to create their own divine heir. So using the divine waters, um that they had at the Fountainhead Palace, they created the Divine Child of Rejuvenation. Uh, she is known now as the last heir of the False Dragon's heritage. So, okay. she there there was multiple children. There's this is from a Vadi video video where he explained like, oh yeah, if you look under the Fountainhead Palace or under the the shack they have in the back, there's just a bunch of dead little skeletons. Like, the Senpu monks had clearly been experimenting on children to create their own divine heir for quite some time. And as you can see in the photo, a lot of them have kind of rotted away (laughs) at this point. You know, aside from the child murder, I think they should have worked on their acronym game a little better. Because Divine Child of Rejuvenation, if they change it around a bit, it could be Doctor. It's almost there. It's Dictor. Or like Dick. I, yeah, I, think, yeah. I, I, right. I think I think I could have done a little better than them for the naming. Divine uh, only yeah. child to hopefully resurrect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it last time? All the first? Cockney <laughs> Buddhists that are like yeah. <laughs> experimenting on the textile mill children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were trying to guess what a Dragon Ball topic was based off of just BR. And you're like, yeah, of course it would be Broly. You're like, what else would it be? Or brr, it's Frieza. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're it's Frieza out, out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a little. You can stretch it with the acronyms. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so in the possession, uh, in her possession, the Divine Child of Rejuvenation's possession, she has the Mortal Blade. It can kill anyone, even those with the dragon's blood or those who are infested with centipedes. Uh, I think I have a picture of the Divine Child. She looks a lot like Kuro, except as a little girl with longer hair. That's really the difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't have noticed the difference, honestly. Yeah, they look very similar. Little Japanese girl. She has both um, her arms, four, oh, five fingers, or four fingers and a thumb. That's good. Yeah, That's she's just not health. mutated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's not a pile of bones beneath a fountain. I gotta not give yet. that to her. Not yet. Unconsumed mm-hmm. by centipedes as well. Uh, at least... Yet. Uh, the it's time of writing. Her body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we, we got right to the break when I was thinking of it, but the centipedes. Have you ever seen like silverfish? They're like uh, kind yeah. of like centipedes. That yeah. apparently, if you live in New York, you have to put like like covers on your drains and stuff, or else they'll just crawl out of the sewers into your home, like out uh, of the disgusting. pipes. I'm glad I've never been to New York City, and I intend to keep it that way. Yeah, so it's just like for anyone. Yeah. I, we get them here, like, but you'll see like one at three a.m. like crawl out from a crack in the floor or something. Don't I've... drink the silverfish potion at three a.m. Where you like, <laughs> <into a> silverfish? <laughs> the silverfish potion. <laughs> <laughs> three a.m. 
That's, I don't know who started the potions at 3 a.m. YouTube kids trend, but it is so dumb. Uh, uh, just weird guys too comfortable making content for children would be my assumption. Probably. <laughs> for a bunch of child bones in, the, in their basement, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Check under that guy's shack. Yeah. A bunch of dead kids in Amogus costumes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the cops, like, writing sus on a notepad. <laughs> Uh, so the catch with the mortal blade is that merely unsheathing the blade is enough to kill whoever is holding it you need to spend money to make money so only those with the power of resurrection can wield the mortal blade so Uh... she does gift it to you and in the cutscene Sekiro just like he does the cool samurai like crack where he just pops up like an inch of the blade out of the hilt uh, and then dies immediately and has to that is like the classic That's like the classic, like, this this blade bears a poison that could kill 10,000 men, and, like, the, the bad guy's threatening you and, like, licks his own blade. They're like, why did you do that? And, you know, yeah. like, it's just the classic, like, touch the blade and die. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just unsheathing it. It's inert. Wow. Yeah, the, the, he slides it up, dies, and it slides back in. He's like, fuck! if you just shake it out onto the floor it doesn't kill you which yeah. you can't do in the game <laughs> at least not the second time right? No, you, you knock it out like ketchup that's not horny you have to like yeah. hit the, top, the bottom yeah, yeah, of the, yeah. uh, hit the, <laughs> the bottom Sekiro yeah. Shadows try to die only once like that. what? some ketchup bottles like to get spanked I, I, I have a bunch of crude ketchup bottles over in my places <laughs> dry ketchup for me please <laughs> my wife is a ketchup doctor she says that ketchup has never wet <laughs> we all know what doctors are. yep uh finally now that i've danced around a little bit and kind of uh we, we we put it in there we can finally talk about centipedes both in sekiro and Thank in God, Japanese dude. mythology i know i know i've been edging you guys this whole time like a bottle of ketchup about the mm-hmm. centipede thing so centipedes don't actually have a hundred legs but they always have a perfectly even amount of legs what if I rip one leg off? Well, then you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, that kid who's going to grow up to be a serial killer has been working on that centipede for days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Sekiro is a centipede and he loses one arm, but it just keeps happening all the way down the right yeah, yeah. side. <laughs> a bunch of prosthetics. <laughs> yeah. Basically, that Every dragon, time you right? die. That dragon is like long and thin and somebody pulled one of its arms off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, some gigantic sick child pulled, like, plucked mm-hmm. its arm off, right? Well, mm-hmm. whenever you travel through um, a black hole, something called spaghettification happens, where you get super stretched out. So dragons are just um, things that have already traveled through the black holes through time and space, gotcha. I think. Oh, okay. And they've come out the other gotcha. They, yeah. they, that's why they're spaghettified. There's another little universe of just a bunch of squat, round little divine dragons out there. Oh, they're so cute. Yeah. Pusheen, yeah. <laughs> they roll around, yeah. They can barely yeah, fly. They have tiny yeah. little wings on their back. Yeah. Like that's Dragonite, like, just like <laughs> yeah, the spiral baby dragons that you crack out of the eggs. There, they're all roly poly and cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little volleyball. Uh, so the stagnation of the waters of rejuvenation. Uh, I guess Ethan, if you haven't opened it up, you can look at the centipede monk now. You have my permission. Ugh. Um, yeah, yeah. He's not um, looking so good. I really like the fact that they just made big, regular-looking centipedes. They're not stylized whatsoever. They clash very hard with the art style of the game, which I think is really cool. They look very mm-hmm. out of place. They're jarring, um, yeah. They're very, but they're just normal-looking. Yeah, but yeah, um, like you say, like the it is kind of this like mystical aesthetic, and like you know, even the the creatures that you see are seem to be like stylized a certain way, like the the Japanese oni kind of faces and things like that yeah. is, is present throughout, and then it's like bug. <laughs> and it's like real bugs close up are creepy enough on their own i don't know if you guys saw but there was it might have been national geographic but there was a photo contest and just this year a close-up picture of an ant's face is what won and i'll post it here this is a oh, real ant's yeah, face close up they're horrible is it uh, like something out of a movie man they got like almost like hairy looking teeth like the red eyes yeah ah. very alien and that's they, those things walk all over. There's probably a thousand under any of us right now. Just yeah, they, they outnumber us billions to one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God lot. they can only lift uh, from their perspective big leaves. But for eight us, times, eight yeah, times yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Imagine you could pick up eight times your weight, dude. I could pick a up lot. eight thousand pounds. <laughs> 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 Come on. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> So the stagnation of the waters of rejuvenation have resulted in infestation of immortal centipedes. Um, th- I think they like you know like spontaneous generation. This is, like this is like, literally New York. This is they're literally the silverfish crawling out of the divine pool sewers. Oh yeah, the divine <laughs> yeah. New York tap water. The mayor won't drink on camera. <laughs> when you go to the swamp level, you have to fight a fat berg. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do in demons souls uh, you fight a thing called the dirty colossus which sounds like a sex move but it is very much like the new york sewer fatberg thing Ugh. it's weak to fire uh the mayor of new york's afraid of it probably <laughs> the fire <laughs> there's like Someone combating fat bergs in the sewer <laughs> with a flamethrower. Well, if you yeah. melt it back down into butter and gnocchi that's all clogging shit up and like unflushable toilet uh like baby wipes, right? Then mm-hmm. that all, that shit all burns once the I water. Guess, yeah, we need heated pipes so all the fat doesn't coagulate. Oh, so just like just like swoops through. Yeah, There's and then the everybody's thing. hot shit would be passing through a lot faster. Too. Everyone, everyone thinks they're hot shit. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're hey, look shit. at this guy. He's walking around with the attitude of a heated pipe. Thinks he's yeah. hot <laughs> shit. <Yeah. laughs> hey, look at this. Guy. What, you some sort of warmed up fat bird? Yeah, hot <laughs> shit. Yeah. Hey, uh, excuse me, excuse me. You got heated pipes at home? <laughs> uh, uh, no. Why do you think you're hot shit? Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the winner right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So like in the photo I showed, uh, sometimes the centipedes are wrapped around the body of a corrupted individual. Like the monk in the picture is completely desiccated at this point. Uh, However, in bosses like the guardian ape or the corrupted monk, they are inside the body and they burst out of the neck when the host body is killed. Um, I didn't like in Resident Evil. Uh, Yeah, they're very much they're very Las Plagas vibes. Mm hmm. Yeah. You think they at least give you better back stability? Like they they line up with your spine, and keep Help it your straight. Spine, yeah, yeah, that'd be yeah nice. probably. I think the shell would be good too for distributing weight. Like the centipede infestation gives you a way stronger core than the Las Plagas from Resident Evil. It's a very slimy problem. Ah, so but speaking of which, uh, it's a real cold pipe problem. You know, the, yeah. that slug joke you guys made last week was popular in the Discord server. I think I got compared to furry and slimy today or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you, I like you were so in with riding slugs, dude. And I it's a you made a, you made a big deal out of it. Peter doctored that picture. Yeah. I, did not <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I can't even remember that. Like Slug Mountain or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like basic blue aerial font. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, the the centipede relationship with dragons uh, is 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 very cool as well, which is what we're going to get into now. Um, the centipedes in Sekiro are based off the uh, mythical Omukade, gigantic centipedes that fed off humans, great serpents, one of which is in the game, and most importantly, dragons. Um, one of the very bizarre parts of the myth is that the Omukade are weak to human spit. So, you <laughs> like talked about this in, in your bit about the poison dagger. In the myth where a hero defeats a gigantic centipede, he does lick the, his arrowhead, and it oh, goes yeah? right through um, its its shell and kills it. Like wow, all his nice. arrows bounce off of it, and then the one he, then he's just like, uh, I mean, it's like it works for my wife, and he's like, bleh, bleh, yeah. uh, <laughs> right through the shell. <laughs> there, I mean, there's definitely something to spit in folklore and and like mythology. Like I just finished reading um, Neil Gaiman's Stardust, uh, which is like it's a. Uh, he they pitch it as a, uh, a like a fairy tale for adults, like it's a a British fairy tale, but written in the 1990s by Neil Gaiman, and it's you know, uh, but it's really good. But like it, in one of the scenes, he's like making a deal. The character's making a deal with a witch. He's like in the fae, and he's like making a deal with a witch, and the witch is like spit on the ground, and they both they both spit, and the witch like combines their spit with her shoe kind of thing. Mm. Um, but you get that all the time, like like spit shake and things like that, like like yeah, yeah. Packs made with spit. There's a um, company you can spit in a vial. They'll tell you who your grandparents are. <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> there's, there's another company, a pretty gamer girl will spit in a vial and ship it to you. Yeah, you can get farts <laughs> in a jar now, too. You can get anything you like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Neil Gaiman story, the next witch that the, that guy has to talk to, uh, she's just like, we need to combine our farts. And yeah. they, <laughs> they put their asses new, together. Like, <laughs> a whole new meaning on Stardust. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Dust in the inside just, of that jar. Just farting back and forth into each other's butts forever. Yep. That's that's something real. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, a different game note that I thought was interesting here. There's a uh, fire type centipede Pokemon that's weak to water called Centiscorch, which I thought was a really nice touch of a centipede being weak to water. It's, a, it's um, called Centiscorch in the game? Yeah. You that can is drown just a Pokemon. Too. The Pokemon is called Centiscorch. Oh, and sorry. It's actually, I thought you were saying in this game you were comparing something to no, a Pokemon. No, no, excuse me. I, <laughs> I, I, on a different game note. I, okay, I meant okay. different game, not on a different note away from uh, farting into a witch's butt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a separate video game. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pokemon Centiscorch is a, uh, is a fire type Pokemon, making it a centipede weak to water. So it really closes the loop on that one. Um, yeah, so the, these false these centipedes coming out of the divine waters and being the false dragons because they prey on the dragons and the 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 false dragons air being the little girl and also there. they look like dragons they got long they thin do. bodies they mm. look very similar like they spaghetti look like with dragons. little spaghettis mm -hmm. on the sides yeah oh. right or like shredded cheese hanging off maybe mm -hmm. sure. wouldn't that be just a horrible <laughs> meal <laughs> <laughs> one, like one long pasta in the shape of a, yeah, a pasta noodle in the shape of a centipede just like with like cross hatched thought, cheese could I, I could, I do, could I do one long thick spaghetti not like a cannelloni that's like stuffed but like I was gonna say cannoli yeah, or whatever that's cannelloni cannoli's like, the dessert a solid yeah. noodle you know what I mean it's Probably. yeah that's I think at that point you just start approaching bread like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and can I, you do that? Can you eat that? Yeah, you cannot safely consume long bread. No, <laughs> <laughs> they need to core it. They, that's why they take the middle out of the like the fusilis and shit. There's a difference. Like you want more gluten or like less gluten in your past? I think it's more. Uh, you want it to be like stickier? I, I don't is sure. Gluten, is gluten a, like a a binding agent? Is, it's is the it more an, you. Is it an ingredient? The more you fuck with your dough, the more gluten you create by folding it over and over and over on itself. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Cool. I've never made cool. my own pasta. Right? Jamie's a Jamie's a hetero genius, is what he said earlier. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like cooking, and my brother my brother used to make uh, pasta from scratch, and he used to really enjoy that. Oh, so. cool. You know that. Yeah. I've always liked the uh, the 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 press thing, the two rolling wheels with the crank on it to flatten out uh, like a lasagna noodle. My yeah. grandmother has one in the basement that I always loved playing with as a child. Never seen her once use it, and it's still there. It's been <laughs> it's probably years. a cigarette roller. <laughs> <laughs> Big old hand roll darts. <laughs> uh, so I think through listening to and reading other people's work the, that um, the uh, the the excuse me, the divine waters infest those who drink it. So it's like stagnated and is approach is attracting like scavenging animals. I, I don't know the diets of centipedes. Thank you, Jamie. I don't know the diets of most centipedes, but I know you can find them under logs where there is a lot of decay and whatnot. And like the giant ones with the big fangs that some lunatics keep as pets. I think you have to feed them other bugs. But um, uh, like they, 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 they definitely scavenge there. Uh, and then after that, they can like consume the divine waters. They become immortal and then keep their immortal host alive. You fight the guardian ape twice. The first time without the mortal blade, and where you cut off its head, it comes back to life, and you pull out the centipede to execute it. But it comes back later. Where in I don't know if it's in a cutscene. I, I didn't get to the second fight. Um, it, in a cutscene or whatever, it's still decapitated and it's just like pressed up against a wall of the mountain where the reservoir is pouring down and just dumping divine water directly into its like head hole oh, where okay. the centipede lives. And that's when you finally manage to kill it is when you when you have the mortal blade, you fight the, the guardian ape again, pull out the centipede and finally finish it off. And gotcha. the finishing move against the corrupted monk is the same thing. You pull the centipede out of her neck and then kill it with the mortal blade. Mortal blade. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. the mortal blade, however, doesn't care how you became a mortal as it can kill anything at any time. Uh, there is an ending where you execute Kuro with it. You sever his immortality and kill him with the mortal blade. I don't know if it can kill the divine dragon. You do use it to harvest the single tear for one of the endings, but I don't know if you could actually kill the thing. Maybe that's how it lost its arm. Who knows? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it, it's also the only way to, like I said, to kill an infested enemy. But its origins are mysterious, and it's just, you know, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, that's all I know for the moment about Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, I have been your host, Peter O'Donoghue. You can find me at Lore Boys Podcast on Instagram. 
I'm shooting to get a comic out soon. I don't know when. I'm still shooting for Valentine's Day. Still feel good about it. Got a lot of coloring done. But there's still... There's... Oh, every time. Just like a log full of centipedes. Every time I turn the page, there's more fucking work centipedes. To <laughs> every single time, We're gonna, dude. I think, you know what? You shoot for getting your colors done by the 14th. I know we talked about it and you're worried about And then about, we figure like, out how to sell it. You <laughs> yeah. Get the yeah. get the thing done for the fourteenth. Worry you just, about you, your next. You, thing. You just, yeah. You're 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 a star, okay? We're gonna, me and Jamie. We're gonna make you a star, Pete. You don't worry yeah. your, your pretty little head about any of those business decisions, okay? Uh, we don't yeah, you get us the a little noggin with that stuff. My huh? eyebrows getting real hot from all the thinking I've been doing. You're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sign it over to us. We'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah, don't no worry. Problem. No problem. Yeah, I ain't worried. I still have fun, but yeah, the uh, well, we the amount wrong. of the work yeah, is exponential. We got like. Like, I don't know, like 45, 45 percent of peed, and you can get like a good 10 percent of peed, and we'll be good to go from there. 10 percent of peed. Thank you. Jamie, on that, on that banger, you want to talk about Discord where, where you can find more of these great Jamie jokes? Discord.gg slash lore boys, L O R E B O Y S. I hang out in there a lot. Um, Whenever I'm up early going to get breakfast at 7 a.m. on a gummy, I'm there. Whenever <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. just playing Pal World and sharing my favorite pals with folks uh, in in Patron AMA, uh, if you're a if you also take the the extra jump to become a patron, you get access to uh, some other stuff like the loser titles, um, the pictures for the show, uh, an extra special chat that is supposed to give a, a little bit of more of our attention. I, I tend to be active everywhere uh i read just about every single message so if you want to get in this head you want to change my biology by just perceiving you just fucking get in the discord man you can change this whole show do it you cowards yeah uh try and change me dude i'm immutable uh thanks so much for listening everybody if you enjoy the show consider leaving us a rating or review on your podcast app of choice it really does help the show to continue to grow so we appreciate it everyone who has done it in the past uh, if you want to support the show financially, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash loreboys, where you can get access to the episode picks that we've kind of been, uh, that I've been frantically pulling up. You get this picture of a scary ant that Jamie posted in our, our private Discord channel. Um, you also get bonus content. We have over 100 episodes of bonus content, ranging anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, each of those. So uh, yeah. get in the Discord if you want more information. Uh, you can vote least... on episodes like people did for this one. People vote yeah, recently we, yeah. yeah, recently we have uh, been putting up some votes too. Um, we're always looking to do more for the patrons and we appreciate you guys and we give you guys a kiss every single week um, so thanks thanks so much for uh, considering our Patreon if you don't trust Patreon we do of course have Lore Boys Prime a service that we've always offered we've always offered the same rewards for the same cost that's one thing that you can one other thing that's immutable is always what you give to Lore Boys Prime always gets you the same amount which is um, we're going to put centipedes in your mouth and <laughs> down your down your neck um, but <laughs> Don't worry. It's we're gonna make you into a long bread if you're a Lore Boys Prime patron. So <laughs> yeah, there's no no payment needed this week. We're gonna make long bread from you, and I'm gonna try eating you. I want like a spaghetti noodle that's like a eel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want an eel size and shape spaghetti noodle. I'd yeah. like a Lore baguette. I think that would be pretty nice. I'm making a chicken soup. Lore right boy. Now. Lore boy get. A bo- Lore boy get. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't oh, mind that. Oh. Dunking oh, a little bit in my soup. Uh, I should go all. grab one of those rock hard last hour of the grocery store being open baguettes after we're done this, actually. I oh, got yeah. a fresh baguette on the counter from today, and I, I am going to go have some long bread when we're done. Yes. Yeah. It's, I it's haven't even happen. baguette and, a pot, and some pate is what I'm craving right now, actually. Gonna, 9, I'm doing PM, 9 p.m. I haven't even put the vegetables into my soup yet, so I'm going to have an 11 p.m. chicken noodle soup. It's looking like, yeah. Very well, much. if if you want to help Jamie get long bread like the rest of us, then consider putting centipedes down your neck. <laughs> okay, and then that would cost you a lore boy. Lore boys. Uh, uh, if you think they tickle on the way in, wait till the way out. 